All right, and we are back here on BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. I got John Mathias here, the national sales manager at Coop by Ryder. Now that is Coop, right? Not Co-op. Which? How do you? How do you say that, John? Yeah, that is Coop. It's a play off of Co-op, but I think Coop just sticks a little bit more. It got. It kind of got that cool feeling. Kind of. Kind of little hip hop j- jive going on with the with there the you name. Go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, John, we're here to talk. We're, first of all, um, tell us who you are real quick. My name is John Mateos, and I'm the national sales manager here at Coop by Ryder, based out of Miami, Florida. All right. So you got you, you didn't quite get hit hard by Ian, but y'all are definitely affected no. negatively over there in Florida, right? We Our prayers go out to everybody out there in Florida right now for what's going on. Yes, over there. yes. Some areas definitely got hit um, a lot more, as y'all know, Cape Coral on that side of town, Fort Myers. Uh, here in Miami, thankfully, it just missed us. It went west and moved up north. So we got the rain and the wind, but thankfully it was just, just that here on this side. All righty. So let's talk a little bit, John, about uh, – we, we, we know all about Ryder, right? Everybody right. in the whole, everybody in the United States knows Ryder um, for uh, many, many reasons. You need to rent a truck. That's where you go. You go to Ryder to rent a truck. Um, right. But now there's Coop by Ryder. Well, first of all, you want to start with what is it or you want to start with the need? You tell me how this came to be. Yeah, sure. So um, we'll start with how Coop came to be. So Coop was started within Ryder as a proof of concept. It actually was tested out in Atlanta. There were three employees that started off. They're still with Coop to this day, and this was about five years ago. So it turned into, in the positive sense, it turned into this this monster solution for the industry, Um, a new concept in the industry, the whole peer-to-peer truck sharing concept. And it's, uh, it's grown threefold year over year. And we expect it to continue to grow moving forward as well. So again, five years ago, proof of concept, three employees. Now there's over 100 employees. Um, and it's doing extremely well in terms of servicing renters and helping out fleet owners as well make uh, revenue on idle equipment. All right. So, so, so help. So I, I kind of see where it's going. So why yeah. don't you tell us where the need was what, and how these three people created this in order to, to make this work, this, this equipment type sharing? Sure. So um, sharing of equipment is not anything that's new, right? People were always sharing equipment somehow, some way. There was not just any coverage on it. And if you think about idle equipment, they say about 25% of the fleet sits idle at a time. And so Ryder had so much demand for equipment and the supply, obviously, Ryder can only rent out some uh, Ryder equipment. So this whole truck sharing concept, that's why they call it like the whole Airbnb, Turo side of things. It was to connect uh, fleets that were sitting idle, help them make money one way or another, and connect them with renters that were needing equipment. So that was a solution provided, again, taking care of both ends of the equation there. I, I, okay, so you, you, let's start with Airbnb. You use that yeah. analogy. Yeah. Um, and it's right. pretty easy to use Airbnb. I want to go somewhere yeah. and stay. I log in. I get. I pick a spot. Bang, I'm there. I, get, I, get, I can lock in a room. Are we talking about the same type of ease uh, with, with this COOP program? Definitely, definitely. Now, um, onboarding is a little bit different of course uh it's all business to business so it's not like you can show up with your credit card and id and rent somebody's 26 foot box truck but the concept is the same i mean you could it could be midnight you could be sitting at home browsing to see what's available for you to pick up in the morning so the visibility is 24 7 and i always do say it's as easy as booking a hotel room or booking an airbnb once you have your account approved, which I'm sure we'll get into, once you have your account approved, you can book literally uh, Nash on the national scale. You put in your reservation and the fleet owner either accepts or denies the reservation. But you can do it at any point in time and you can do it from your cell phone. Even. So so is this is this this is a this isn't this isn't the rider rent app, right? This is a different app. Yeah. This is a right. totally different platform right that we're talking about 100 yeah uh, and and you're facilitating this 
this, John. So really, when you talk, come on here and talk to us and you want to get people involved, you want both sides of the equation in the mix, right? You want people Definitely. that have equipment to, to think about this as an interesting and an opportune moment to make sure that they can uh, generate money on that equipment. And also, um, you got people that want to rent, right? So you have both sides of the equation. You're just the middle guy connecting them, right? Right. Yeah. So we're, we're the platform in the end. What we provide is, and again, I'm pretty sure we're going to get into this. Uh, what we provide is the security for the fleet owner. They end up just owning and maintaining the asset, but we run the whole rental business for them. And on the renter side, we provide that ease of renting equipment as well. It just so happens that it's somebody else's equipment. Yeah, it's a truck. Or, I mean, like I, I like to call it, it's it's a truck. It may not yeah, have, it may not, not have, ours. yeah, it may not have right, you know, rider stuck on the side of it. There you go. But it, but it is a tractor, or it right. is whatever it is that you're renting, box truck or or what have you. But it is a just, it is equipment. And when you're, hey, when you need a tractor today or tomorrow, you don't really care what color it comes in, right? I mean, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, and that's the thing we talk about all the time is price, proximity, availability. Uh, who knows? Dave's Logistics down the street may have that truck you've been looking for for a month, but it's literally down the street. It's covered within the Rider Coop platform. And right. again, Coop is a division of Rider. So like you were saying, it's not Rider's equipment. It's Dave's equipment, John's equipment, um, anybody's equipment who is listed on the platform can actually uh, rent out to these renters. So let me, and, I, and, and before we go any further, John, real quick. Yeah. You, you really got to be vetted by Ryder in order to do this, right? I mean, I, I got to have, I mean, pretty much have a Ryder account in order to make this work, right? If I want to do on either side of the equation, is that correct? So it's separate from Ryder in that aspect, but um, we have our own vetting process for the renters. And we're told that we're actually more strict than Ryder. Obviously it's not our equipment, so we wanna make sure it's protected. On the owner side of things, anybody can list equipment. So it could be an entrepreneur coming into the industry. It could be a large private fleet. It could be a leasing company, um, which those are our three sources of equipment, investors, leasing companies, and private fleets. On the renter side, they go through a very strict vetting process to make sure they're legit enough in order to rent the equipment. So it's aside from Ryder in that aspect, but in other aspects, we utilize Ryder's infrastructure for sure. But we have our own internal uh, onboarding team. So, and I'm going to tell you, this sounds a little bit more futuristic with the with the with the next generation of being able to jump on the phone because. I'm going to be honest with you, John. I'm not the greatest at jumping on the phone and using right. all the cool the cool apps. This is a next gen type uh, step in the trucking industry. You, would you agree, young people? This would be somewhat. Seems like it would appeal to the young people a little bit more. So it does. Um, one thing I do say: we use the Airbnb comparison just for simplicity's sake. But what we have that. Um, that is an addition is, for example, we have an entire sales force that's half the staff is a sales force and they're on both sides of the equation as account managers. And so you could even call or email me and I'll go out and find what you need and I'll set up the full reservation for you without you even touching your phone. So we facilitate that aspect of it, but you are correct in thinking that way for sure. Um, but we have an entire team that puts together deals on the national scale. It could be hundreds of units for one renter, and we take care of that for them as well. So there right. is the platform. It's great, works well. And then we have our entire sales team that that works up the, the deals as well. Oh, and I, I do like concierge service. I mean, is that, if that's go. what we're talking about. I'm going to steal that from you. Con <laughs> here, I'm going to write that down. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you right service. now, I'm all about a little concierge like service. That. Because I think I think uh, that's what you're talking about here, and it, it makes yeah. you feel good, right? A, a little personal level, somebody that you can go to 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 solve your problems or whatever is you need when you're out of town or whatever. Man, I think that's important. Hey, um, so let's talk about 
where is the number one market right now for Coop? And, and, and right now, so be sure. honest with me. Where are we hitting hot? California, Texas, Georgia, and Florida. So I would put Texas, California, number one, Georgia, Florida, three and four. And and what do you mean they're the hot the the to rent both rent and rental? I mean both renter and rentee. So that is just based off of rental days. So right now, if we look up Coop's data, the hottest markets on Coop right now in terms of rental days, obviously supply and demand are those markets. In terms of up and coming, um, Coop is national. We went national in February, but some markets are more developed than others. The Northeast is going to be big. Chicago is going to be big. Um, Colorado is another market that's going to be really big. We've been getting into Colorado. It's just the those other states I mentioned are more developed. We've been there longer. So those states are right now the hottest, but there's so much demand in these other regions. We just can't rent what we don't have, right? Yeah, I know. I look, let's yeah. let's all be honest. The compa- the the trucks out there, they're not there. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, they're they're not there to go Small rent, world. right? They're not there to go rent unless you have this solution in place. There you go. Because you can't you call right or right now and you need 100 trucks. You're not, do what? Yeah, not, you're right. They're not going to have it probably. It's not going to happen. I mean, that's yeah. how tight capacity is on trucks. But you are saying, John, the trucks are out there. Yes. We just got to share them. There you go. Yeah, and share them within our platform that keeps it legit, covers everybody, and makes the experience uh, seamless. I mean, you could call several of your contacts and say, hey, do you ever share your truck with another company? They probably did, right? And some probably do right now. But this gives them that protection. So you're absolutely correct. The units are out there. Every time I go to an expo, people say, but there's no idle equipment. Well, there is idle equipment. We're just letting them know about this solution. So I'll tell you what, uh, John, I'm going to I'm going to jump right to it. BCB yeah. is the safest station in the nation. We're about safety here. How yes. is Coop handling safety when it comes to this pro- pl- this platform? Sure. Yeah. So the safety aspect, let's talk about on the renter side. So we vet out the renter, we check their DOT score. And we also check their Duns and Bradstreet. Duns and Bradstreet obviously is more on the financial side, but the DOT score is absolutely critical. And so we have our own metrics internally that we approve or reject new accounts. And it's really based off of that DOT. And so from a safety aspect, we vet out the company as the renter account. Wow. So honestly, if you aren't safe out there on the road, you may not have an opportunity to go. No. And rent with Coop, right? I mean, yeah, if you aren't absolutely. better, wow, I didn't. So y'all have turned people down based on their safety score. Is that what I hear? Yeah, we have our own internal metrics and we're always making it better. But we have, uh, based off the DOT records, we justify what's their operational risk factor, right? And so based off of that, plus the Duns and Bradstreet, which is the financial record credit score for the company, we determine if this is going to be a good renter or a bad renter. Wow. Now, things happen. I mean, y'all know this better than anybody. Um, depending on what happened, depending on the frequency that happened, we do kick people off the platform as rude, whatever you want to say that sounds. Uh, we got to keep the protection for everybody. That includes the drivers, the renters, and the owners, and for rider as well, right? So we do boot people off the platform. If it's a bad renter, we give them a chance. We talk about it, but depending on what it is, we'll boot them off. If it's a bad owner with really terrible equipment, that's obviously not safe. And so if a renter shows up and says, hey, this equipment isn't what they said in the listing, there's this, this, this and wrong, we'll investigate it very, very deep. And we'll determine if that renter has the safe equipment to be rented out or not. No, so I like that. I, it's, I, it's constant. Yeah, we don't just sign them up and then it's a free for all. It's constant. No, I, I like that. I like the idea. Look, I don't want I don't want dangerous guys out there on the road anyway. I don't I don't want them renting equipment. There I don't want them. I don't want to buy. There's probably a reason why they don't have equipment if they're not safe out there on the road. Right. And so they'll think, hey, Coop, new concept. Let's sign up and get the equipment. Well, hold on. It depends. 
It depends <laughs> if you qualify I to like have that. that rental account. It's an awkward conversation, but it's a conversation that we need to have. It's a real uh, conversation, John. It's most a real of the, conversation. Yeah, most yeah. of the like real ones are yeah. Right. I just had someone reach out yesterday. They're wanting to rent some trailers. I sent it to our onboarding team. They came back to me and said, hey, John, sorry, but according to their DOT records, they did not qualify for a renter account. And I mean, to not sound cliche, but it is what it is. So, John, you, you know, I, there's a couple of aspects to this that are exciting uh, for a number of reasons. Yeah. Uh, number there, there. And one of those things is, is, is um, this allows even the small guy to play a big part into getting yeah. equipment, right? And, and because let's face it, if you're a huge trucking company with a large, you know, account and you have a better opportunity to get equipment, you have a lot more, and I, I can, I can, if I have a writer account, I can put a little bit more pressure on writer, right? Sure. Because I, right. right? Because I lease 150 or 300 or a thousand trucks from you. I have a, right. a, a little bit bigger say. It sounds to me like what you're doing is you're you kind of leveling the playing field and allowing equipment for whomever needs it that's qualified to get it. We have an opportunity to utilize equipment that's not being utilized. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. And um, one thing that I'm working on as well within Coop is handling and creating these strategic partnerships. I think there's a lot of opportunity to work with um, brokerage, for example, that have all these carriers, but what's missing, maybe they're only pow they're power only, what's missing is the trailer. So it's giving the chance, whether it's large or small brokerage, whether it's a huge owner operator or smaller starting off or not, it gives them all a chance. And like you said, it's leveling the playing field. That equipment is available for you, the rate for you, the rate for someone, it's listed there. So they're able to utilize that. So that's actually coming from um, uh, startups and small business, family businesses. I mean, I love the large accounts, don't get me wrong, but what really excites me are taking care of those smaller accounts, getting people going in the industry for sure. Yeah, and that, that includes, and obviously we're not just talking about tractors here, we're talking about trailers no. too, right? Yeah, exactly. So for example, it could be an owner operator. He has, I don't know, uh, three, four trucks. What's missing are the trailers. Um, he can't, for some reason, get trailers elsewhere. No one can, John. Can come through the coop. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. No one can right now. They're difficult to get. Um, all yeah. equipment is difficult to get. And I think right. we have equipment out there that's not being utilized. And I think there's a cool and fair way to, uh, to make that viable. Hey, so let me ask you a quick question. There's a, how is the... How does the rating feature on the app work? And sure. what are some of the app features you would like to talk about before we get out of here? What are some of the app? What it, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so the rating, um, it's similar to uh, Uber in the sense of once the reservation is completed, both parties get to rate each other. Oh, and nice. so the owner rates the renter and the renter rates the owner as well. So that's how the rating comes into play. And that's what's displayed there. You can browse as a guest on coop.com and you'll see the ratings for each of the owners. And before the owner accepts a reservation, he sees the rating for the renter as well. So it's a two way street. <laughs> so everybody gets to look at the five stars and four and five stars yeah. as the other guy. Exactly. Did, yeah. and I, <laughs> I like that because I like the idea that, you know what, they're good, they're talkative and that they offer right. a friendly conversation and that the ride was good. Cause I, I have done that myself in the Uber app. Um, hey, go. so it's a great feature. People love it. How can, how can this change uh, business? How can this change? This sounds like it could be a game changer in the business. Don't you believe that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it has been. And, and what's exciting is that from both ends of the the equation here it's lowering that barrier of entry to get into trucking right um the truck rental space if i recall the number correctly it's a 36 billion dollar in industry just truck rentals in the us and so again on the owner side it's allowing uh entrepreneurs investors existing companies expand into truck rentals or give them an extension 
and that completely changes the game in terms of supply in the U.S. On the other side of the equation, it's giving people an additional way to rent equipment. It's giving them 24-7 availability to make decisions, and it's getting them going when they need it. Someone can book something now and pick it up this afternoon if they make that connection with the owner and the owner is okay with it. So it gets people going quickly. It's been a game changer for small companies, medium and large, to be honest with you. Um, you might be surprised, but we have a lot of leasing companies listing on our platform because it gives them that reach. So it's actually very interesting, again, on both sides of the spectrum. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I, I was going to say, how do you, I, I, they're not actually competitors. You're going to be working with partners. It doesn't really matter if they have equipment to lease out or exactly. to rent. You, you're just offering a platform for everybody to go grab it. Um, that's very cool. Hey, John, I appreciate it. Hey, if anybody needs to reach out to you or and want to find out about it, how do they do that? Yeah, so my email will be right here at the bottom. Feel free to email me. Go to coop.com. Um, and to sign up is extremely easy. But, you know, I'm going to use that, that term that you said, concierge service. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, and whether you're an owner or renter looking to get in the industry or just wanting to learn more about it, um, reach out to me and we'll definitely get you, uh, get you going. Well, I appreciate it, John, man. I want to thank you for coming on uh, and, and letting me know a little bit about this because I, th I find it intriguing, fascinating, and a great opportunity for all that get involved in it. It makes it, it makes it, uh, it makes it, it makes it easier in a sense. And I, it's a great idea. Um, John, I'll tell you what, before our guests leave, I ask all of our guests to state their name, who they're with, and if you're and that you're watching BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. Can you do that for me? Of course. My name is John Mateos. I'm with Coop, and you're watching BCB Live, the safest station in the nation.